elections and your electoral colleges, call for the chief. Right? Let the chief speak. Zero one, let the chief speak. That's the hashtag zero one, let the chief speak. They all got to let the chief speak. Now, I got a feeling that the nation going to be putting some good news in the final call. So some of y'all got to keep an eye out on that for me. Um, let me know what's going on with the fruit because they, they making moves over there in silence and, and we ain't watching like we posed to. Right. But these trumped up cases that the police is putting on people in California is very well documented from your rampart to your crash units. This shit was going on all over the country. Your gang task force. These was the natural enemy to the tribes. We looking at the police as if they're there for us. They are policy enforcers that's here to do the bidding of an interim government that's masquerading as our rightful government on tribal land. Anything that was outside of D.C. up until 2018 was of 2017 when the totem pole was erected was tribal land. When that totem pole was erected, the Plymouth Rock bullshit was over, but our tribes are not watching. Um, go back and look for, look it up. Tribes march totem pole to D.C. That's taking back that 10 square mile that the, Mason, that the Masonic lodges of different degrees had left um, signatures in the form of sacred geometry on the ground in order to conjure that motherfucking energy of power to the artificial government source. It don't work no more because we know what it is. If we didn't know what it is, it would continue to operate as business as usual. But I ain't no regular motherfucker and this ain't business as usual, right? So the Crips and the Bloods is here actually and the Vice Lords to get rid of the police, right? So this becomes a problem because the police, a lot of the clans don't even know that the police is the enemy and they work for the enemy in ignorance, right? The tribes are supposed to police their own neighborhoods and as long as it ain't no outside um, hanky-panky, they know what happened. Soon as some outsiders come in, that kind of murky the waters and the tribes don't know what's going on. And then they know that it's some foreigners on the land, some imposters and some invaders. When we go back to governing our local communities, letting the fathers be the motherfucking police of the neighborhood where they can help guide the children for the mothers, then we can start being effective again. But we don't want to do that. We're talking, you know, too much about uh, what, the, what the system going to do. Kill that bullshit. That shit is over with. Right? Then we got good old Dr. Sabi. Herbalist from New York moved to Honduras to set up his tribal network. That's currently the home of Aaliyah and Lisa Lefai Lopez. They refused to come back to participate in the shenanigans. And they said, we gonna do what Tupac do, wake us when we free. Whatever the fuck that mean. We here to wake their ass up though. So Dr. Sabi pissed off the Food and Drug Administration and Big Pharma, right? Them was his sworn enemies. This is why he had to move to Honduras in the first place. But he's not the only one. It's uh, another doctor, got an herbal uh, program named Dr. Africa, right? It's some more of them. Um, the, they, the lady they kept shooting with the radiation until she died from cancer, Dr. Who the Clark, so that they can say that none of her, they can discredit her because they're shooting her with radiation and she don't even know it. Right. But they murdered her. But she was belligerent to Big Pharma. The same as Dr. Joel Wallach. Dead doctors tell no lies is his uh, signature lecture. You could probably find it on YouTube. Dead doctors tell no lies or dead doctors tell no tale. Dr. Joel Wallach, where he understand that in 
98% of your ailments is due to malnutrition of some sort, right? They got us dying from accumulated sleep deprivation, accumulated dehydration, because they keep telling us, they tell us all of the wrong information about the functions and the mechanics of the body. So as long as they doing that, all of our healers become belligerent to the state, right? The educational system, I, I can't leave our Dr. Suzar blacked out through whitewash. Y'all can't forget her. So while y'all doing y'all research on the stuff I'm saying, Dr. Suzar goes in. She ain't for no game. Blacked out through whitewash. They had an abridged version years ago. We used to photocopy it and pass it around. But uh, I used it until I exhausted it as a guideline for my research. The abridged, the unabridged, or the abridged version, which was just like a uh, like a little pamphlet of uh, highlights. And I use that as my research guide. Everything that she talked about, I went to go research. And she was talking about some of everything. And I'm like, I want to know who this person is. Back then, I didn't know if it was a man or a woman. All I knew was their name was Suzar. But since I was able to find lectures and stuff on um, YouTube and order a couple of books by Dr. Suzar, but... Y'all need to check her out. She badass. Another one you need to check out while we while I'm giving y'all references is the Sema Yoga Institute in uh, Florida, um, Muwata Ashby. He got a lot of great information and a lot of good teachings that can help a lot of us. And it's tied to the old Kemetic or Egyptian systems of mysteries to help you unlock certain aspects of your heart and mind in order to be more of assistance to yourself and others around you. It ain't no good. If you can't be no good to yourself, you ain't gonna never be no good to nobody else. That's why shadow work and attitude and perspective of information, the way you look at the world, the more gloom and doom you apply to your condition, the more gloom and doom you spewing out into the world. When you can't find a way to find out how to make yourself feel better, how to shift your paradigm, you're going to be stuck in a negative paradigm that doesn't serve your interests. So it's a lot of people out here with this victim mentality that's making life worse for everybody around them by not correcting that victim mentality. So that's a critical aspect of complete liberation of a people is to break from the mentality of being a victim. Break from that. Anything that make you have to hate somebody to feel good about yourself is a fraudulent uh, motivator. It's not true. If you have to de downgrade another individual in order to feel good about what you're doing, then you're in the wrong lane. Your lane is congested. You got you either got somebody putting pitfalls in your path or you got rocks in the lane in the fast lane that can cause a crash. But whatever it is, if it makes you feel good to put another person down, that paradigm is flawed and it's never going to serve your highest good, nor your best interest, nor the interest of anybody around you. If you don't want your children to surpass you. That's not going to never serve our greatest good. You want all your children to be better than you. So you want to teach them the best information you can teach them as soon as you can give it to them so they can get started being a better person at an earlier age than we figured that shit out. Right. And right now, with the rising of the matriarchy, we got to prepare seven generations of improvements to the next seven generations of children. And if we're not prepared to do that, we're not fit to be here. We're not fit to be parents or elders. We have to be willing to give the children an uh, opportunity to advance beyond where we currently at. It's the whole concept of a midget on the giant's shoulders. Well, imagine a giant putting a giant on his shoulders. Right? How far can that giant see over that midget? This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to make our children be bigger and greater than we was, and they can stand on our shoulders and see further into the future 
of making a better future than we can. They're going to be more creative than us. They're going to be more intelligent than us. They're going to be physically stronger and more agile than us. They're going to know faster how to make the decisions than we did because we was taught not to think. Right? So, when we go into the new age under the matriarchy, right, we going to have people like, uh, if you Google this, the other Bush family, this a family of geniuses. She is going to be one of the people helping us write our curriculum. The, she got all her children graduated university in 18 years. If only over here in America do we drag K through 12 out from K through university. That doesn't make sense to me. Everywhere else, K through 12 is carried out in, in K through 6. Sixth graders is doing the work or fourth graders is doing the work some of our seniors is doing. That's not normal. Right? <clears throat> so, we all heard about Rashad Jamal and the case he owned. Most of us don't know, like, how infiltrators slid up under him made him isolate himself from people that can spiritually give him the support he need. But who did he piss off? Who was his enemy? Toussaint Lovture was the primary instigator. He was the general that went to the Duddy Bookman and they got together with some sisters to overthrow the French in Haiti, Napoleon's army to be exact, and they won. Well, just because we come back don't mean these motherfuckers don't know who we is. They know that that's Tucson reincarnated, right? they well aware of that. It was the holders of the Louisiana Purchase that's the problem he's a problem for he's a problem for them because as this canal is about to be finished in Haiti and when they turn that water on that's the return of the sweet water the closing of the Haitian revolutionary conjure and he have to go back to Haiti right but they playing the same fucking story out in reverse the same story. Go back and look at Tucson Life. Look at Rashad's. The only difference is the cause of the allegation. Right? They use sex crimes against the leadership for one reason. The allegation is the evidence. That's it. They don't need nothing else but the allegation because the allegation is the key piece of evidence to give you a sex case. And this is what make that shit so dangerous when you playing with the judicial system and they using children as uh, bait in order to take people that would be leaders out of the community, right? The child going to grow up and realize what happened when they was a child. I've seen so many letters where women use molestation to win uh, divorce settlements and got their husbands or ex-husbands locked up and then the children writing them letters when they grown saying, we sorry, we lied on you, daddy. And some of these guys don't even want to talk to their own kids after the trauma of being convicted of some shit they didn't do. But people writing in telling them. So the trauma to the child of a parent convincing them to accuse another person of some shit they didn't do is as bad as the trauma of being falsely accused for some shit that you didn't do. So you got two people traumatized now off uh, allegations that, you know, they got more information on the prosecutorial side that's known as exculpatory evidence that they never revealed during the trial. And he an enemy to the 
French Revolution to the motherfucking uh, French Republic that settled Haiti. That's who he pissed off. Directly, not indirectly. When they heard him say that he was Toussaint, they was full throttle on the government head. Get that nigga. Get him and get him now. Now you got these motherfuckers going back trying to pile shit on that the man don't know nothing about. You know. So that's who he pissed off. When you know the power of the enemy that people piss off, you know the kind of power that's coming down on their shoulders to shut them the fuck up. Right? That's why I don't do no congregating nowhere. That's why I don't charge nobody no money. That's why I don't be going to no meet and greets. Because they'll never get me caught up in the same. I'm just going to keep telling the truth in the public domain. And they're going to have to figure out how to get me. I'm not finna be part of no cults. You're not finna call me no cult leader. I don't got no communities nowhere. No, none of that shit not gonna work. Right? And if a motherfucker say I did something to him, no, they had to come wherever the fuck I'm at because I'm stuck in the cave by the ancient and I can't go nowhere. Right? That's how you know. I am not finna be caught up in that bullshit. I done seen too many real players fall to let these bitch niggas beat me. Which takes me to Tupac, Biggie, DMX, Old Dirty Bastard, Easy E. It's a whole conglomerate of industry artists and entertainers that became actors like Tyrese, um, Snoop. They got in the movies and they got in the music in order f to drag the contract fraud out front. This is how we was able to compare it to the sharecropping agreements, right? We able to compare the music artists and the actors to the sharecropping agreements because they was being uh, robbed of royalty rights. What you don't know if you're not in the industry right your royalties is your retirement that's your retirement funds if you in the industry the money you make with your shows and your record sales not really record sales is promotional and this is how the royalties end up being a retirement program and that's sam cook sars records this is how long this shit been going on Otis Redding. They murdered Otis Redding for his masters. They murdered Sam Cook for his business and his wife. Right? So, when you looking back on the historical record that the enemy told you, just be aware the motherfuckers didn't lie to us the whole step of the way. They only tell us the story that's gonna make us resist the least. Right? The they got us believing that in order to resist, we have to go do a riot or we got to march somewhere. No. Leave it. Just walk away. Go home, sit down, and don't do shit till they system fall. Because when the matriarchy come online, everybody going to get what they earn. Good, bad, or indifferent. All I can say is for all you motherfuckers that didn't do a good work that doesn't have a good reward coming, it's good riddance. I hate to be you. But that's what the all of the East Coast, West Coast rivalry, right? The South and the um, all of this stuff is infiltrating the music industry as an artist. At the same time, you using the cover of the music industry as an artist to connect with other chiefs in other parts of the land so that we can create an established network of chiefs across the land prepared at a moment's notice to overthrow the corporation. How you going to know the corporation overthrow? Look for them motherfuckers that's protecting Trump to flip the bow ties. When you see that shit, FOI is the security of the nation right now. But until the end, you know, just sit back and watch. You watch the news reporters switch out. The news reporters switch out mean that the information is about to come forward. That's what that means. I've been saying this for years, but a lot of people 
haven't been seeing this seeing me for years so they wouldn't know right um the banking industry would love to shut up my guy dr claude anderson black labor white wealth the understanding of the economic stability of a group of people a cross section of the community we going back to banking big mama style the family bank every family supposed to have a bank and when you don't have a family bank you have somebody in the family that's going to end up in poverty the family bank is to prevent poverty anywhere on the land we not never supposed to have nobody homeless we not never supposed to have nobody without a meal to eat or a place to sleep or clothes on their back big mama house where we used to go when we our life is not going how we wanted to in the new town we in or the big city or wherever we go and we need to regroup get back on our feet get a few dollars get a hot meal we go to big mama house and the cr 